Dr. Ply says that um, Palatipura Sundri is considered to be one of the most secretive goddesses of the Siddhas. So Dr. Ply, why are the Siddhas keeping this goddess so secretive until now? What And what has inspired you to bring her forth in a more prominent way at this time? Good question. In every religion, there are two versions of it. One is a popular version for the lay person and the esoteric one for the enlightened messiahs, gurus, masters. The masters hold the key. The popular understanding is for lay people. The reason why the masters kept, particularly the Siddha masters, kept the secret to themselves and only passed on to the closest disciples is that you are dealing with tremendous amount of power to influence nature, to do whatever they want to do. Because the lay people are egocentric by nature, they don't know how to use it intelligently, use the powers intelligently. They always kept uh, the secret to themselves and to people whom they uh, could trust, they delivered it. And uh, that's one reason, the main reason. The second reason is that Ordinary people are incapable of following through certain austerities. Like for instance, if I ask someone, you meditate four hours in the morning and four hours in the evening, you'll run away. Why? Because you get about 40 to 50 thoughts a minute. And you, have you analyzed your thoughts? No. Why? Because we have not been trained and science and technology have further, you know, disabled us to connect with the supernatural. So these are the reasons why the lay persons don't have access to the divine. But I am breaking away from this tradition even going far beyond that. And that is what triggered me to do this Navratri program, the Nine Nights of the Goddess. I don't want to be doing it the same thing, the three goddesses of Lakshmi, Parvati, Saraswati, over and over again, and then they don't want to change it. I thought that, no, that's not the way I'm going to do it this time. This time I'm going to do it to give the secrets of the sounds. The sounds are the building blocks of the universe, of your intelligence, of your supernormal powers. If you want supernormal powers, you have mantras for them. You have to use them. The highest mantras belong to the goddesses. So many goddesses are there, not three. And I selected three goddesses. They are very, very powerful goddesses. And, uh, and they will respond to it. I'm going to show you something very interesting. After seeing that, then you will know the power. I'm going to show you now the response of the goddess to the call, to the puja. Here is Bala. The goddess whom I am going to teach, introduce during this Navratri, who is a nine-year-old girl. She comes in that form. And uh, it's one of the miracles that she did recently to convince you guys that uh, how she is powerful and responds to prayer. I will do a couple of uh, clips.
You see a light appearing right on top of the flame. You may ask why light? Is there any religion that doesn't refer to God or describe God or illustrate God other than through the light metaphor? God is light. Whether it is Islam or or Hinduism, or Judaism, or Christianity, or any religion, light. And here is Bala, the goddess I'm going to uh, introduce, her mantras I will introduce you, or here. Arubami 